we go with Strike Up the Band, of course, from the late, great Sammy Nestico. And uh, that was in a tribute to, to Sammy Nestico, who sadly passed away 
earlier this year. Thanks so much for joining us here at the iconic Abbey Road Studios. We are in Studio Two. Uh, that's not the, uh, the lesser brother by any means of the Abbey Road complex. It's the iconic studio where the Beatles recorded all of their stuff. It's just amazing to be in this room. It's fantastic. And uh, we are sorry to have uh, held you up with a little bit of a delay at the start of proceedings there. Um, but we're here now, and, uh, and we intend to give you a fantastic afternoon of brilliant big band music. Now, uh, in 1973, uh, Frank Sinatra, he came out of retirement. It was one of the, the many retirements that, we'd, uh, that he endured in his career. And uh, by 1974, he was back on the road on a tour uh, where there were several notes night at uh, Madison Square Garden. And uh, he was accompanied there by the Woody Herman Orchestra, Woody Herman and his Thundering Herd. And uh, of course, it went on to become a TV special and the great album, uh, Main Event. Um, so do have a look at that one. It's a brilliant, brilliant album. Uh, you'll remember, uh, it's, it's brilliant because he comes out through the audience. He's got like a sort of a boxing ring kind of set up in the middle of Madison Square Garden. He comes through massive crowds. You m crowds, you remember crowds, right? They were, they were a thing, weren't they? Um, and uh, he comes on the stage and he's, he's seriously, the chairman is back from retirement. Well, with no sign of retirement, uh, we've got a brilliant guest with us today. He's our star guest, no retiring whatsoever. It's Matthew Ford, and this is the opening number from Sinatra's main event. It is The Lady is a Tramp. Three, four. too hungry for dinner at eight she loves the theater never goes late she'd never bother with anyone she'd hate that's why the lady is a tramp doesn't like dice games with barons and earls won't go to Harlem in ermine and pearls Won't dish the dirt With the rest of those girls That's why the lady is a tramp Loves the free, fresh Wind in her hair Life without care She's broke, but that's oak Hates California It's cold and it's damp that's why the lady is a tramp She gets far too hungry, babe Wait there for dinner at eight She adores a theater, but She never jump in there late She'd never bother They one she'd hate That is why the lady is a tramp Doesn't like dice games Barons and Earls Won't go to Harlem In shiny Lincolns and Pearls Won't dish the dirt With the rest of those girls That's why the lady is a tramp She loves the free, fresh Wind in her hair Life without care She's broke, think we all it's California, it's cold and it's damp, that's why the lady, that is why the lady, that's why the lady is a tramp. I never saw the sun shining so bright. Never saw things going so right Noticing the days hurrying by When you're in love, my, how they fly Oh, blue sky smiling at me Nothing but blue skies do I 
I see Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's fabulous to be here in this uh, this wonderful, iconic studio with this fantastic, awesome big band. Um, we're going to turn to a, a tune now recorded by the great Mel Torme, arranged by Billy May. We've had it transcribed by our fabulous trombone player, Richard Wigley, over there. And this is from an album called Ole Torme. We're going to take you south of the border. One, two, three, four, one, two. <laughs> South of the border, down Mexico way That's where I fell in love when the stars above came out to play And now as I wander, my thoughts ever stray South of the border, down Mexico way She was a picture in old Spanish lace Just for a tender while I kissed the smile upon her face Cause it was fiesta And we were so gay South of the border Down Mexico way Then she sighed as she whispered manana Never dreaming that we were parting and I lied as I whispered manana Cause our tomorrow never came south of the border I rode back one day There in a veil of white By the candlelight she knelt to pray The mission bells told me That I mustn't stay south of the border down Mexico way She whispered manana Never dreaming that we were parting And I lied as I whispered manana Our tomorrow never came For her husband he entered the place oh, Took one look and said but for one peso I would happily fracture your face oh, You will never look the same South of the border I rode back one day there in a veil of white By the candlelight she knelt to pray The mission bells told me That I mustn't stay South of the border Down Mexico Yeah! Matt Ford! 
Ford, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Ford. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, well, I thought it was fantastic. I suppose it's time to ask. In one word, what do you think of it so far? Rubbish. I'm sure someone shouted late. I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, here we are, and uh, I know that we've got hundreds, if not thousands, of you watching across the various channels that we're going out on uh, this afternoon. And uh, we just want to sort of say hello to a few of you. So uh, I have my very own Debbie McGee. It's my good lady wife here, <laughs> Victoria, and she's going to introduce a few of the social media comments we have. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you so much. We've had so many great comments. Uh, we've got loads of birthdays, so can we say happy birthday to Najir Butler, whose birthday is on Wednesday. Uh, Megan Holroyd, happy birthday for tomorrow. Uh, Paul Mace, it's your birthday too, so I hope you have a lovely day. Um, and Glyn Morley, you'd like to wish your son a happy 40th for this month, so happy 40th to you. Uh, we have another man in the room who's just had a 40th birthday. Ray. Thank you, John Chenoy, happy John birthday. And another man who's going to be 40 uh, in a week or so. Ages away. Joe Pettit. No, it's ages, ages away. Ages away. Um, and Penny Perks would like to say um, to her mum, um, hello, to Ruth Watson. Watson. She's doing a great job uh, through lockdown, and these broadcasts have really got her through. So thank you to you. Thank you. Um, and Matt, we've got some comments for you, Matt. No. Just no. a few. Uh, Julie Perry wants you to say hi to her. Hi she's, Julie. she's a big fan. Um, and Susan Edwards says, tell Matt we look forward to seeing him again uh, with the Fat Chops at Mosley. Yep. Excellent. He sings with other bands. It does. Yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> uh, and uh, Jackie Churchill says, just thank you for all the per performances through lockdown. Thanks, Jackie. First class. Thank so uh, thank you. What's next, Joe? Well. Funny you should ask. Uh, <laughs> what comes next is an important point. Which camera am I on here? Am I on, I'm on you. You over there. That's where you are, isn't it? Um, the, uh, an important moment has arri uh, arisen. Uh, we do just need to remind you about the honesty box. I'm sorry to do this. Uh, this, uh, this doesn't come cheap, as you can imagine. The, uh, the amount of cameras, lighting, licensing, just to be able to film and stream something from Abbey Road and all of that stuff doesn't come cheap. If you're watching this at home and uh, you can, you can f put anything you can afford into the honesty box, we really, really appreciate it. It means that we can carry on putting out these live streams uh, as we've been going along throughout. Uh, we've only been able to do it with your generosity, so really appreciate that. Uh, I know many of you have been ever so kind in helping us with the Kickstarter campaign to make the album, which we'll be doing later here. But this session is all about the streaming. So uh, if you're watching this at home and you did already put into the Kickstarter, thank you. But this is something different. So if you, if, uh, if you put in maybe what you'd buy for it, pay for a ticket, something like that, that would really help us out. Now, moving on. Uh, Ted Heath is the, the name that's synonymous with the best in British big band music. It's, it, you know, I, you'd find anybody that would sort of quibble with that. He's the number one band uh, with people like um, Dennis Lotus, Lita Rosa, Dickie Valentine, great musicians like Ronnie Verrill, um, Kenny Baker. And uh, we always like to sort of play something maybe from their repertoire or something that sort of alludes to the sound of Ted Heath. And uh, one of the features of all the Ted Heath concerts was, of course, the two trumpet feature with uh, Bobby Pratt and Burt Ezard. Um, and sometimes we play some of those numbers and uh, things like Memories of You or Bill. And, uh, and sometimes we've, we've managed to get a few new arrangements. Um, this is an arrangement that was written a few years ago by a phenomenal musician, a sax player by the name of Martin Williams. And uh, we're going to use this one to showcase two of our trumpet players. Uh, the, the, the track is Slow Boat to China. It's not going to Wuhan, though. And uh, we're going to use this one to showcase... Oh, too soon. We're going to use this one to showcase uh, Russell Bennett and George Hogg. One, two, one, two... Four.
Thanks, fellas. Uh, right, well, uh, no Lem Phillips uh, extravaganza would be complete without the raffle. Uh, we were going to do a meat raffle as it's a special event, but uh, apparently COVID restricts us from doing that. So uh, you're stuck with some CDs for prizes. We've got a couple of CDs from Matt Ford's back catalogue and a couple from the Len Phillips Big Band. Uh, if you can get your donations into the uh, honesty box before 3.45 p.m., we will enter you. Actually, we could knock that back a bit now. We're a bit late, couldn't we? Uh, if you could get those in by 4.15. 4.15 is the cutoff uh, for... Is it four mm, let's say four o'clock, split the difference. If you could get it in by four o'clock, is, is that okay with everybody? Is that all right with you at home? Uh, we will get you in, that's the cutoff, if you want to be entered into the live prize draw. Ooh, exciting, I know, as if the music wasn't enough. Uh, now, uh, the, the Disney organization have obviously been a, a great part of music making uh, for, well, probably getting on for a century now. And um, they, uh, they've just started to remake a lot of films as live action, haven't they? A lot of the classics, uh, things like Dumbo and Aladdin. Of course, there was that uh, Mary Poppins 2 uh, that sort of got the, the more modern treatment. Um, but in 2016, uh, they remade The Jungle Book. And uh, instead of uh, the voice of Louis Prima uh, voicing King Louis, we had Christopher Walken, which was a change. Um, well, today, we don't have either of those people, unfortunately, but we do have the budget for one fantastic singer, uh, who's going to sing that for you right now? Uh, and so we're going to go back to Matt Ford, and this one is I Want to Be Like You. One, two, two, two. <laughs> What's bothering me?
I gaze out of my window at the moon in its flight my thoughts all stray to you in the still of the night while the world is in slumber all the times without number baby when I say to you, do you love me as I love you? Are you my life to be, my dream come true? What a band, eh? What a band. Fantastic, guys. Um, I seem to be cursed with, uh, with uh, sadistic band leaders. Um, what? Not only has he asked me to, uh, to record in Abbey Road Studio 2, uh, which is nerve-wracking enough in itself, but he's also asked me to, to uh, record a song that was made famous by one of my um, vocal heroes, Matt Monroe, in this very studio. So thanks for that, Joe. That's, um, that's great. No, no, pressure. no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Just um, relax, enjoy yourself, and, uh, and don't, don't mess it up. This is from Russia with love. One, two, three, four. <laughs> With love, I fly to you, much wiser since my goodbye to you. I've traveled the world to learn I must return. I've 
seen places, faces, and smile for a moment, but oh, you haunted me so, still my tongue tied. you'd say no to Russia I flew but then then I suddenly so strange I know we say this every time it's so strange playing without an audience so we just imagine all of you clapping while sitting on the settee at home just like this. it's great it's great I, I often wonder if there could be more than one person watching in the same street or one household in the same street whether you'd you'd hear it if you had the, the door open um, that's probably wishful thinking but it's great to know that there are so many of you uh, watching uh, we've got a few more social comments. Over to Vicky with the socials. We have indeed. Uh, we've got some shout outs. We've got the Goslings watching in Seven Oaks. Thank Ray. you for watching, Ray. Um, Neville, a shout out for Neville, who's watching in Australia. Oh, it's late. It's there. like 2 a.m., yeah. he says, and he's thoroughly enjoying it. So, um, Carol and Lorraine say the band has lifted their spirits. Oh, so, thanks, guys. Nice. Um, love to Matt and Gemma from Lynn Tandy. Love to Matt and Gemma. Yeah. Loving the show. Um, we've got Andrew Gathercole. Hang on. It's your birthday as well. What? Hey, Apparently. Yeah, next, week. next week. Happy birthday. Oh, Someone's put it on there. Happy birthday. Um, and uh, we've got people watching from all over the world. We've got San Diego, Whee. Philadelphia, Ooh. Scotland, oh. Stevenage, uh. Uh, Wild Norfolk, bit of Croydon Whee. in there. Yeah. The Wirral, Sussex, Coventry, everywhere so thank you so much everyone for tuning in and uh, do let me know if there's any more birthdays or shout outs and i will do it after the interval probably a bit later brilliant okay thank you very much right. uh well we were sort of doing our, our homework on uh, the publicity for the show today here at abbey road and uh, i think pretty much everybody that's working here in the room has worked here uh, many times over the years on various things um my lofty claim to fame is working here with uh, andrew lloyd webber and michael ball um, I, mm, you see, I can't say I'm not fans because they've employed me, but it, you know, it's, it's, they're all right. Maybe they're your cup of tea. I don't know, you know. But, um, and so we were sort of going through it, and I, 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 I you know, I, sort of, I, I said that, and then, uh, and then I spoke to our drummer. Uh, our drummer is a, a gentleman by the name of Harold Fisher, and he's no stranger to any recording studio. Uh, I reckon he's probably the most recorded uh, drummer that's alive in Britain today. And uh, hopefully tomorrow as well, Harold. And uh, <laughs> it's our day today, isn't it? You know. <laughs> so um, I spoke to Harold about, you know, I know that he'd recorded with Freddie Mercury and he's recorded with John Dankworth. But what's he done here at Abbey Road? Is it anybody as brilliant as Michael Ball? And he said, well, there's Billy Eckstein. I went, oh, okay. And, and Sarah Vaughan. Oh, right. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? And Henry Mancini. So I thought, oh, that's, yeah, okay. He's got me, hasn't he? Anyway, he's here today with us. Hey! And uh, we're going to feature Harold on the last number that we play before we go to the interval. Um, and uh, just before we do play that number, though, I want to just tell you about the interval because uh, it's not just any old interval. Oh, no, it's an Abbey Road interval. And as you probably know, uh, we're here in part th today because we wanted to pay tribute to our founder, Mr. Len Phillips. And uh, Len passed away earlier this year 
and I was keen that we should pay a fitting tribute, and there aren't any concert venues or theatres, and that was what really made me think that we should come here to Abbey Road, because I think he'd be pretty pleased that his band were here at Abbey Road doing probably the first live stream of a big band from Abbey Road. And uh, I also wanted to just say from all of us, um, you know, how much how grateful we are really for what Len did, because none of us would be, you wouldn't be sitting at home watching us and we wouldn't be sitting here playing this if it wasn't for the band that he set up. And of course, all those happy years for you have been able to follow the band throughout the time that the band's been on the road and the countless musicians that have benefited from the work that he really generated. And, uh, and he was a big part of keeping big band music alive in Britain. So we want to pay tribute to Len. We also want to say um, hello and our thoughts uh, are with Len's family. And we know that Anne's watching at the moment. Anne is uh, Len's wife. And uh, hi, Anne. Uh, it's great to know that we've got your support, as ever. Um, so uh, do stick around. We, uh, the reason I'm saying all this is that we've got an interview planned for the, uh, that we're going to show in the, in the interval, the interval interview. And uh, it's an interview that was recorded with Len Phillips uh, back in 1996. And it's, it's all about sort of Len and how he set up the band and whatnot. So uh, stick around for that. And then we, of course, will be back with loads more brilliant music from Matt, from the band, and we've got a very special guest, Nicola Emmanuel, that's going to be singing a number for us in the second set. So stick around for the interview with Len, stick around for the second half, but right now, stick around for this. We're going to feature our drummer, Mr. Harold Fisher, on the Buddy Rich version of Cole Porter's Love for Sale. Thank you, Harold. <laughs>
how that's a beginning. Well, it's very simple, really. I, I was about 15, 16. And for those of you who can remember this far back, there was a gentleman called Jack Jackson. He used to do a jazz program on the BBC. Forces Network, I think it was called in those days. And always in his program, When did I first become interested in jazz? So that's the beginning. Well, it was very simple, really. I, I was about 15, 16, and for those of you who can remember this far back, there was a gentleman called Jack Jackson. He used to do a jazz program on the BBC. Forces Network, I think it was called in those days. And always, in his programs, he always played a Stan Kenton number. And uh, for some strange reason, I just liked the sound of Kenton. I think it's because it was different, obviously different from the usual swing bands of the period. And after listening to the Stan Kentons for Saturday night, and uh, also listening to those wonderful solos he had in the band, Maynard Ferguson, uh, his lead trumpet player, and the wonderful Art Pepper, who was really the one I listened to most and made me decide upon taking up an instrument. He was the one, and it was literally the Jack Jackson record program that I first listened to. to that influenced me in any, any form of music. Well, the choice of uh, really playing the alto sax was, was, was pretty easy, because I listened so much, first of all, to Art Pepper, who was with the Kenton Band. And then, of course, the, uh, you know, the, the master, and he seems to be remained as the master, was, of course, Charlie Parker. Now, Charlie Parker was, when I first bought a Charlie Parker record, I really didn't understand, because he was far too advanced, in my opinion. And, um, but it is many years later, and that's a good thing about any music. You should really listen to music, not once, but several times, particularly if you don't understand it. And it's been, if it's recognised as great music, then you should accept the critics and, and the people that do know, and continue to listen. And that's what I did with Parker, although I bought the record. I really didn't understand these incredible licks he was playing on his saxophone. But I continued to listen and realised what a true master he was. And then, when I was really just about beginning to find my way around the saxophone uh, because it wasn't 100% on the saxophone, I was very interested in dancing and uh, the dance halls, the scene, loved it. And of course I then, National Service came along and by pure luck I happened to pick up the Melody Maker which was the uh, musical paper in those days and what do I see that uh, you could spend your National Service in a military band so I checked them all out and I got an application form and I was able to spend, um, I in fact enrolled for another year uh, and so I did three years in the army and I went in as a musician which was wonderful because I mean that made that uh, I could spend all day long practicing and it was absolutely wonderful and there was a dance band, there was a jazz in there and you were surrounded by guys that were interested in music it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful experience. The discipline of a military band is something you really can't obtain today if, from just gigging around because you have to have uh, somebody who you respect and who's got a certain authority um, to keep you in order in the band. And you do. You do need that type of discipline. It's very, very good. There's not many people that really are mad enough to want to form a big band. It is a little bit of a headache. It is a headache. Um, and how did I form a band? Well, of course, I, I didn't form a band. I was, um, I inherited a band. And it's very simple, really. I was uh, asked to join this band. It, it was in East London, in Essex. And it was okay. It wasn't a bad band. I was quite enjoying myself there. But um, I really didn't know that there was trouble within the band. I, was, I kept out of problems. And after about 18 months, the band leader then announced he wanted to leave. And uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought, oh dear, I wonder who's going to take over. And then suddenly, I realised his eyes were settling on me and said, Len, I want you to take over. Well, I'd never organised a, a band in my life, so I wasn't, uh, I wasn't really that much interested. Not really. But however, I said, well, I'll think about it for a while. And then realised that if I didn't take over, there was going to be no band. 
and all this wonderful music was going to be there, I wouldn't have anywhere to play. So I said, okay, I'll take it over. And then after a few weeks, I realised why he'd left, because there was a lot of problems within the band. And I, and I, I, I suffered it. We did very well, actually, but surprisingly so. Within, um, I think, the period of time I was there, we, we, we were getting a lot of work, and it was, it was quite surprising. But after about 18 months, I said, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I think you should find yourself a new leader, because I really didn't want to become a band leader anymore. It was a nightmare. So that was it. That was 18 months of a band leader, and then, again, playing for other bands. Until... I walked into Marks and Spencer's one day, and who should be in there but uh, the gentleman who now plays in our trombone section, Stu Parker. And he knew that I'd been organising this, the other band, for, for the 18 months, or the period of time I was there. And he said to me, Len, you really should start another band, he said, because you... There were several things that went wrong. Well, that's where the Len Phillips band, big band started again. Mark II started again there. And in fact, if you go into Marks and Spencer's in Lewisham, I think they've got a blue plaque on the floor, actually, where we, in fact, started it. But uh, it was quite a, quite a moment, really, if you think about it. Anyway, the, that was Stu Parker suggesting. One of our early successes, uh, I consider a success, was a, a very small theatre in, in Eltham, SE9, uh, the Bob Hope Theatre. Now, this was all, once again, an idea. Uh, I'd been to the Palladium concerts in the 50s and seen the Ted Heath band with Dennis Lotus, Dickie Valentine and Lita Rosa. And I thought, well, it, it could work, it could work. A 200-seater, not too bad, uh, for starters, and put it on a concert, literally, like a Ted Heath concert. Uh, not that I was putting myself in the same category as Ted Heath, but it was an idea, and um, with a guest star. Now, Bob Hope is a lovely little theatre in Elton, and uh, so who else could we choose as a guest star? But of course, uh, Dennis Lotus. And along he came, he had no idea to start a band, and uh, I think he was pretty brave at the time, really, because he'd never heard of us once again. And he certainly, well, he was easy, he's very easy, can't we? he's a lovely guy, and um, he's, been a, he's not only been a great influence on the band, but he's also helped us tremendously. I think if there's one man that's helped this band, it's got to be Dennis Lotus. Uh, from that one show, we then continued. We didn't see him actually for about a year, because I then then uh, left that style of putting together shows, but came back to it again. And we re-met with Dennis again. And certainly he's been a great help to the band. He's found us. He's introduced me to various venues. His comments have always been well received. And obviously, he, he knows exactly how the Heath Band used to uh, run. And it was, it was, he just passed all the information over. But it, it was a wonderful guy, Dennis, and he's been a great asset to the band. I first got to know Len through uh, a piano player that I, I worked with called Paul Davis. And he's been a long-time friend of uh, Len's. And um, he suggested to Len that uh, I sing with his band at a concert he was doing at the... Uh, Bob Hope Theatre. So I came along and rehearsed with them, and I thought, oh, God, it's the most awful band I've ever heard in my life, you know. <laughs> but he was such a nice guy. And, uh, uh, you know, we, it was fine. We, we had a pretty good concert. The uh, audience seemed to like it. And the band was OK, but it wasn't that great. Now, of course, it's a beautiful band. I mean, I'd be happy to sing with them anywhere in the world. I think they're marvellous. And especially playing the arrangements they do, the old Ted Heath arrangements, which aren't easy, you know. And uh, some of those um, Stan Kenton things. Great band. I love working with them. There were several bands that, that uh, moved into the Glenn Miller era. Now, I appreciate Glenn Miller. I enjoy playing his music. But you've got to realise there is there's limitations. I mean, you are limited with Glenn Miller no more than possibly 12 or 15 tunes you can play in an evening. So I thought, well, no, we can't just go along the same road. The era I love, other than obviously the concert pieces by Stan Kenton, I love Les Brown. He was a 
great American band, the Harry James style of music, and uh, Benny Goodman's style. You know, the, the great, in, in other words, swing, a big band, swing band. And those were the type of that, that I thought would work. I did want to do Glenn Miller. You can't go to the extreme and play Stan Kenton or, because it wouldn't be accepted, not continually. And so we decided, at least I decided, that really the swing era was best for us. And if you listen very closely to the band, you'll, you'll realize that the sound, the general tone of the band, and the soloists are all based on that style. We never have soloists in that, um, that don't reflect that period. And it's important that when you play a tune, that the soloist does recreate a similar sound and style to, 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 the, to the 40s and the 50s. It's a good sound. It's, it's, um, I think the public enjoy the, the, you know, the choice of music we play. And it's a, it was tragic, really, that such a wonderful period was being lost. But certainly, the, uh, some of those arrangements are tremendous, they really are. Um, so it wasn't to be Glenda. Not all the time. People, you know, speak about the strong following we have. It's, um, I don't know what other bands have. I mean, it's very difficult. Have we got a strong following or have we got a weak following? Um, I certainly haven't, uh, I don't work deliberately on it. I promise you, I don't work deliberately on, on trying to obtain a following. You work on, you work on a process of just analysing what the public enjoy most. And when you find that recipe, you just simply go along with it. You realise, you realise they like to be spoken to, as I said earlier, that uh, they enjoy, they enjoy an atmosphere. And so you do feel that the responsibility of creating an atmosphere does fall very heavily on me. And of course you have to accept that. And you mustn't be corny and you mustn't keep using the same comments. But I suppose really when you, you have, that takes a lot of thinking. And I suppose in deliberately trying to create atmosphere, you are creating followers. Uh, but you're totally unaware of that. But we have got a very strong following because we know from the letters and the phone calls and the people keep returning. I mean, I, 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 it's, uh, I often find it quite difficult now. We play a completely strange area. And we have, and I glance around, and I tend to get a little nervous if I don't see some irregular faces. Because my throwaway comments sometimes are not always received in the same way by a strange audience. And when I ask them to give their opinion of the band leader, they sometimes cheer, which is quite disturbing. I expect the biggest boo of the evening. <laughs> so there we are. It's not, it's not done deliberately, it's done... I think it, it, this has just evolved, actually, in the, in the atmosphere and the way we, we, we create um, this, this closeness with the, with, the, with the clients and customers. The future is very simple, really. It's very, very simple. I only hope that uh, people that wish to engage us think it's simple. But uh, the most important thing is... is, is that the public enjoy what we are attempting to do, which is recreating a style of music that really should never be forgotten. And I don't mean in just one theme or with one band leader. There's a whole period, a whole era there, 30 years of music that's got to be retained, and, and uh, someone's got to do it. And uh, hopefully I won't be the only one attempting it. But we do like the idea of not only playing good music and quality music with uh, the best musicians available, but certainly that, uh, that the public enjoy what we present. I mean, only those can decide, because uh, we like it, and let's hope you like it, because we intend to go on for a little bit longer.
Of course, Stan Kenton's Intermission Riff to finish the intermission. Uh, we played that one because uh, Len was a great fan of Stan Kenton. I think it was his favourite of all the bands. And uh, so that one was for you, Len. Uh, we, do, we do miss you being around. Um, I hope you enjoyed the interview. Thanks for sticking around for the second half. As I said earlier, we've got some brilliant stuff lined up. Uh, also, just to point out that um, oh, I think we can extend the raffle for another five minutes. You've got five more minutes. Uh, any donations received in the next five minutes will qualify for the raffle. And uh, we've got, see look, I've even got, I've got some bits of, ooh, CDs. Yeah, I know. Uh, so uh, if you can get your donations in before then, that'll get you in the raffle. Of course, you can carry on donating afterwards. We won't say no, but uh, you'll miss out on that. Now, uh, one of my favorite, favorite uh, big band albums and vocal albums is Come Dance With Me, the, uh, the brilliant Frank Sinatra album with lovely arrangements by Billy May. We're gonna uh, welcome back to the studio, Matthew Ford now with one of the numbers from that album. It is Something's Gotta Give. One, two, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> force such as you meets an old immovable object. 
reject like me You can bet as sure as you live Something's gotta give, something's gotta give, something's gotta give Then an irrepressible smile such as yours Warms an old implacable heart such as mine Don't say no because I insist Somewhere, somehow, someone's gonna be killed So on guard, who knows what the fates have in store From their vast, mysterious sky I'll try hard, ignoring those lips I adore But how long can anyone try? Fight it with all of our might Chances are some heavenly star Spangled night We'll find out as sure as we live Something's gotta give, something's gotta give Something's gotta give it with all of our might chances are some heavenly star spangled night we'll find out as sure as we live something's gotta give 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 Uh, we're moving on now to a tune uh, that was recorded. It was actually sung uh, by Woody Herman with his thundering herd. And it's a tune that we've, um, we've kindly have had gifted to us 
an arrangement gifted to us by the fabulous Jay Craig, Craig. wonderful saxophone player and all round good egg, who is probably at home. Uh, if, if he's watching, he'll be uh, in between him playing with his train set. He'll be, uh, he'll be watching this, this uh, at home. Um, so this, Jay, is for you, and this is Sunny Boy. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> When there are grey skies I don't mind those grey skies You make them blue, sunny boy Friends may forsake me Let them all forsake me You see me through, sunny boy You're sent from heaven And I know your worth You made a heaven For me on this earth When I'm old and gray, dear Promise you won't stray, dear I love you so, sunny boy new cracker i like that a lot uh right well um i i just need to give you a little bit of business news uh the band is going to be back on the road yeah life's going to get back on the road yeah so uh we can all get drunk in each other's gardens i think from the end of this month and then we can go down the pub and get drunk in the garden then we can go in the pub and get drunk and then you can come to big band concerts and get drunk no don't come to big band concerts and get drunk come to big band concerts and watch this band we're going to be back on the road we've got some Gigs coming up for you. We are going to be, if you're in the Kent area, we'll be in Hayes in Kent in July. We're going to be down in Eastbourne at the Congress Theatre in August. We've got uh, Warner, Sina Warren, four nights of big band music, guest artists, lunchtime jazz sessions, the whole thing. Four nights at Warner's Sina Warren Hotel. That's on Hailing Island in October. And then Christmas, blimey. We're going to talk about Christmas. Yes, not only Christmas, but Christmas in Croydon. 
Oh, yes. Uh, we're going to be at Fairfield Halls, Croydon, in the Concert Hall on the uh, 21st of December. So if you want a, a nice bit of festive stuff, then uh, you can get down to Croydon Fairfield Halls. Or we're going to be in Eastbourne, I think, as well it, uh, for, with a Christmas show. We've got Dorking lined up for next year. I know, the glamour. Dorking, yes. Uh, we've got all of this stuff coming for you. The best way for you to stay in touch is via our newsletter. You can sign up for our newsletter if you go to our website and you scroll down somewhere. I think it's near the bottom. Might be somewhere. I don't know where it is. You'll find it, I'm sure. Just email us if you're stuck, and we'll sign you up so that you can receive our newsletter. It goes out by email, so uh, it's, you know, it's easy. You'll just get it in, and you'll go, like, oh, rubbish, 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 rubbish. Oh, the length and its big band, something to read. That'll be nice. Um, so do sign up for the, uh, the newsletter. That'll make sure that we tell you when the tickets are on sale. You'll get the front row seats, all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's quite an interesting read from time to time. Um, also, do follow us. If you don't already follow us on, not in a sort of stalkery way, of course, just if you want to follow us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're hoping to keep these live streams going. Even when we're uh, back on the road, we hope to bring you some of our concerts so that if you're at the wrong end of the country, maybe you call it the right end of the country, but it's always the wrong end if we're at the other end, you see. So uh, if you want to see one of our concerts live, um, we hope to keep this, uh, this streaming going on. So do uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. I don't know what else you can do, but lots of social things like that. That's very important. Talking of socials, Vicky's poised. I am. I am indeed. We have Tracy Hancock with her husband Nick uh, dancing in the kitchen. Aww, thoroughly okay. enjoying it. Uh, Liz Wigley, I understand it's happy 40th birthday to you tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> from uh, Richard. Um, Richard, your daughter, is she Maeve? She's five months old tomorrow. Today. 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 Oh, five months today. Yay! <laughs> I'd like to do some shout outs to some kids. I think Henry and Felix, you need a shout out. Hey. And to all the kids watching, it's really nice to hear that there are lots of kids and I know people's kids here are watching some big band music. Um, Carol and John in Wales are thoroughly enjoying it. Elaine Smith is enjoying it very much. And Jean Roberts, everyone here says hey. hi to Jean. Hi, so, Jean. Hi, Jean. Um, Shirley Pugh, happy 86th birthday. Oh, happy birthday. And Norma. Norma wants to say hi to uh, Tony, who had a kidney transplant yesterday. So get well soon, Tony. Harold. Harold, there's loads of comments saying how much people loved your uh, drum solo. So he said it was awesome. Uh, so thank you, Harold. Um, and lots of comments about the lovely Len Phillips. Shane Hampshire said he has many fond memories. Uh, Kevin Spool thoroughly enjoyed it and many, many more. So thank you. Thanks, Vicky. Yes. Um, right, now, uh, we've been doing these live streams for some time now. We started back in my garden in uh, June, I think it was last year. I think we were pretty much the first kind of jazz band of some sort to be streaming live. We did it with five people from the garden uh, plus a cameraman. That was when you could have six people in the garden. And uh, throughout all of this, uh, we've had one man who's been a pivotal point to uh, making all of this work. I'm talking about a man by the name of Chris Traves. Uh, he usually plays the trombone in the band, but throughout this period, uh, he's also, well, everyone knows in the big band world that Chris is the man to go to if you want a, a big band bit of music recording and produced and all of that. Well, he's turned his hand to the live streaming and it's him who's been making all of this stuff sound better than the BBC ever made anything sound. So um, a big up to uh, Chris Trays, but not only that, I thought, well, we're here in Abbey Road, we need to feature Chris because the other thing that Chris does better than anybody else is use the pixie and plunger mute on a trombone. So he's gonna come down the Abbey Road infamous staircase. Here comes Chris Traves. There he is, look. Don't trip, don't, it's not, it's not the time, it's not the time. <laughs> so we're gonna feature uh, Chris now on um, a number, a great bit of Duke Ellington, and uh, we're also gonna feature uh, birthday boy of uh, last week. Uh, everyone's got a birthday at the moment, and it's, it's boring really, isn't it? It's just another birthday. You had a birthday the other day as well, didn't you, Chris? 55. How many? 55. 55. Gets a jab for that. Uh, so, we've got uh, Chris Draves and we're going to feature on clarinet John Chenoy and this is Mood Indigo. Thank you, Bunny.
Ladies and gentlemen, John Shania clarinet and the wonderful Chris Traves on trombone. Well, you won't hear that played better. And uh, how brilliant it is to have it here in uh, Abbey Road Studios. Oh, that's nice to hear. That's great. Um, I've got some dedications that have come in by email. Uh, we have David Lydon. You'll never guess what. David's got a birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, David. Um, Jill Rawlins. Hi, Jill. Uh, Jill's a great follower of the band, and you'll never guess what. She's got a birthday on the 31st of March. Happy birthday, Jill. Um, there's an 18th birthday. It's Ryan Court's birthday. Uh, I don't know if it's today, tomorrow, or yesterday, but that's from your dad, Jason. Apparently, you're going on to uh, study music at uh, Trinity College, Cambridge. Very nice too. Uh, and a, a hello to a few of the, uh, the, the members and sort of family of the Len Phillips Big Band who aren't here today. I want to say a big hello to Eleanor Keenan, uh, to Tony Fisher, to Colin Hickman, and to Trevor Barber. Just a few people who, for whatever reason, health and otherwise, aren't with us today here in the studio, but we're thinking of you at home. Hope you're watching. Hope you're in, you better be watching. Hope you're enjoying the show. Um, we are here, as I say, in this iconic room, and uh, it's the room where the Beatles did most of their work. It's the room where Dark Side of the Moon was recorded. Uh, other brilliant things, such as uh, When I'm Cleaning Windows and uh, Right Said Fred by um, Bernard Cribbins. Classics, I think we'll all agree. Um, Ed Sheeran, one of the more recent occupiers of the room, and uh, I wanted to sort of reflect the room that we were in and as you heard we did that uh, Bond theme uh, from Russia with Love earlier on I was thinking what could we do from the Beatles back catalogue I had a look into that and I was thinking oh there's a few things and one of the numbers that we often play is Can't Buy Me Love 
um, the Ella Fitzgerald version, which is a brilliant, brilliant recording. And then, the research that goes into this, you wouldn't believe. But then, I did some more research, and you'll never guess what. You're supposed to go, what then? You'll never guess what. what? That's better. Come on. That's a tough crowd here at Abbey Road, I tell you. You'll never guess what. what? Yeah, we're done with that. So, Ella Fitzgerald, yes, she recorded Can't Buy Me Love in this room as well as the Beatles recording it in this room. I know. What were the chances? So, I thought we have to include it, and then I thought, who are we going to get to sing it? I spoke to Matt, and he said, no chance. So, uh, I, uh, a couple of years ago, I was fortunate enough to be playing the bass on the tour of the Rat Pack, uh, you know, the, the Frank, Sammy, Dean show that goes around the country. And for a little while, they had a, an extra person in that cast, a person that was playing the role of Ella Fitzgerald. And while I was standing there playing the bass, I thought, wow, she's good. Uh, I need to get her to sing with the band. And I've been waiting for a long time to find a, a moment that was perfect. And as she played Ella in that show and did such a great job, I thought this is the perfect time. So with Can't Buy Me Love, please welcome Nicola Emmanuel. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Nicola's social website, all of that stuff, and uh, I'm, I'm knocked out. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much to Nicola, and uh, I'm sure that we'll have her singing with the band again at some point soon. Now, I did mention earlier in the show, but just in case you weren't around at that point, those of you who've been kind enough to uh, support us throughout the pandemic, and of course more recently with our Kickstarter appeal, um, that's enabled us to make a, a new CD. So we're going to be recording a new CD here at Abbey Road Studios featuring Matt Ford, and we're really excited about that going out. So do follow us so that you can find out how you can get your hands on one of those if you haven't already pledged towards the Kickstarter campaign. This is, the th this is something different, though. So if you did put some money towards that and you're watching this, 
I'm afraid, need to cough up again. I'm ever so sorry. Um, this whole thing is not just a, a CD recording, as you can see. We've put this whole thing together for the live stream. We've got lighting galore, cameras galore. We've had to pay for extra licensing so that we can use the studio to broadcast from. So there's a, a lot of extra expense that's gone into this, aside from the sort of the extra time that it takes for the band in order to be able to do this. So uh, if you could dig deep and help us out, we'd really appreciate that. This is the sort of the pinnacle of our live stream and uh, we're very proud of what we've hopefully managed to put together for you here this afternoon. Um, the, uh, the honesty box is along the bottom there. Unfortunately, we're out of time for the raffle because it's now time for the raffle. And the raffle means music. Here we go. Letter F. One, two, two, two. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the raffle. It's time for the raffle. Oh, yes, we've got not one. Not two, not even three, but four fantastic CDs for you in today's Raffle Draw. See, that's proper showbiz, that, isn't it? I know, I know. So, um, for COVID reasons, my wife here has been able to fold these and give them to me, but nobody else can touch them, so I'm now going to draw the raffle. Usually you'd get you know, someone like Nicola to draw it, but she can't touch them, you see, because it's very COVID secure like that. Oh, but if you do want to see, there's Matt holding up a couple of the prizes there. So I'm just going to dig in here and dig out a couple. Uh, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Helen Tipping has been tipping, and she has put some money in, so she wins. Helen Tipping, you get first prize, which is four CDs. No, that's not. Three CDs, second prize. Uh, no, and... Oh, James O'Carroll. Just what you needed, James. There we go. Hi, James. Digs in once again. And what do we get next? We get Sarah Newlands. Hi, Sarah. And family. I know you're all watching. Hi, Jonah. I was playing the other day. OK. Uh, we've got... Oh, it's the writing, darling. It's the writing. I think it says Ronald Davis. Ronald Davis, she thinks so too. Is that, is that four? That's four, isn't it? It's the four prizes. So, yes, Helen Tipping, James O'Carroll, Sarah Newlands, and Ronald Davis. Thank you for your support. Everybody else, I'm ever so sorry. I know it's probably you just stuck around for that, didn't you? Um, we'll try and uh, make this a bit better for you uh, by getting on with some more music. Uh, where are we? Ah, time for a rumba. A rumba round the kitchen. My favourite kind of rumba. And this one's Matt, who's going to sing for us. And it is Vesame Mucho, bar to the drums. One, two, three, four. Vesame Mucho. I cling to your kiss, I hear music divine. Besame, besame mucho. Hold me, my darling, and say you'll always be mine. This joy is something new, my arms enfolding you. Never knew this thrill before. Bring it to my door, dearest one. If you should leave me, all of my dreams would take wing and my life would be through. Besame, besame mucho. Love me forever.
This joy is something new, my arms enfolding you. Never knew this thrill before. Whoever thought I'd be holding you close to me, whispering it's you I adore. Dearest one, if you should leave me, all of my dreams would take wing and my life would be through. Forever and make all my dreams come true. Love me forever and make all my dreams come true. Is this the last one? Is this the last number? Oh, is that where we got? Yeah, I, th I thought somebody should mention it. <laughs> I was having such fun. Yeah. I think we should. Uh, yeah, I think we should mention that it's the last number and and possibly dedicate it to all the people. Uh, we're, we're fully aware. Um, everyone in this room is fully aware that this this lockdown has been really really tough on on a lot more people than the than the previous ones. I think I think everybody is feeling it. Um, a little bit in, of, or a lot in, in one way or another. So we'd like to dedicate this uh, last tune to everybody out there who is uh, feeling, bit, feeling a bit low or, um, uh, or in need of uh, a little bit of perking up. This is for all of you. Stay, stay strong and stay tough and we'll get through this together. This is Spider-Man. One, two, one, two, three, four. Spider-Man, Spider-Man Does whatever a spider can Spins a web any size Catches thieves just like flies Look out, here comes the Spider-Man Is he strong? Listen, bud He's got radioactive blood Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead Hey there, there goes the Spider-Man In the chair of the crime like a streak of light he arrives just in time spider-man spider-man friendly neighborhood spider-man wealth and fame he's ignored action is his reward look out there goes the spider-man Spider-Man, Spider-Man, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Wealth and fame, he's ignored. Action is his reward. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. In the chill of night, at the scene of the crime, like a streak of light, he arrives.
Did you do the hand thing? Yeah, he did. Because yeah. that's the best bit, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I love the singing and all, but when he, he does the Spider-Man... Do it, do it again. Do the hand it's, thing. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Child of the 70s. Yes. Yeah, all right, well, you've done it now. It's great. Well done, Matt. That's lovely. Uh, folks, it's been amazing. I want to say a few thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you to you for watching, for contributing, for helping us throughout this. If, if you're new to watching our live streams, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for giving us a chance. Sorry about the slow start, but I think it was worth the wait. I want to say thank you to everybody here at Abbey Road for them allowing us to do this. They don't just let any old awake in here to do this kind of live streaming. So thank you very much to Abbey Road. I want to thank all of the sound team. I'm frightened I'm going to miss someone, but we've got Chris Traves, Mark Rogers, Chris Parker, and a couple of other people who I've only just met, so I haven't really learned their names because I'm not very good at that. Um, but there's some great sound people, obviously, here at Abbey Road that have helped us to do this. Uh, we've got Ben and Dan from Stream.Theatre that have been uh, putting all the camera work together and the live, uh, live streaming and all of that side of it. Um, so I want to thank everybody there. I want to thank Vicky for the social media work that she's done there. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, and, of course, I know that you'll be stamping your feet and joining me in rapturous applause as we thank the band! You can't... Yeah, stand up, stand up, take a bow, you know, come on, it's showbiz. And two, three, bow, two, three, up, two, three. That's very nice, thank you very much. I want to say a special thank you. Uh, first time she's sung with the band, and first of many, I do hope, because she's absolutely fantastic. It's Nicola Emmanuel. <laughs> And, of course, the star of the show this afternoon and of many shows and the CD that's coming. It is the wonderful, the immaculate, the... <laughs> it's Matt Ford! Uh, just before we go, throughout all the, uh, uh, the lockdowns since uh, last March, this gentleman here has been, has been not only... Um, keeping you at home entertained with various, uh, various shows from gardens and turkey barns and, and, uh, and, and venues, um, all, all within the confines and the constraints of um, the COVID regulations. And, um, and not many people have done that. In fact, this chap's the only person that I know who's, who's actually been bothered to create work and, uh, and, and try and keep the interest in, the, in big bands going throughout this whole thing. So please, your warmest applause for Joe Pettit. Thanks, Matt. Uh, thank you for that, um, and thanks, everybody. Really, really appreciate it. it. It's so positive, and it's lovely to do. Um, it has been a tough old time for everyone. Uh, it's been excruciating uh, both artistically and financially for so many of us. Um, really, really tough times. Uh, I think there are green shoots. I think we're going to be out pretty soon. It's looking good. Um, you know, a couple of the older people here have had their jabs, so, you know, it's, it'll take a while before it filters down to me, but, it's, you know, it's looking good. John, you're 40 now, so I guess you're ahead of me. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, it's, it's looking ever so positive, but it, it's been really, really tough, and uh, we couldn't have kept on the road at all without you guys at home. Uh, but we're going to send you off with, uh, with one more number, and uh, I think this one is particularly poignant at the moment. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It is How Do You Keep the Music Playing? One, two, three, four. keep the music playing How do you make it last How do you keep a song from fading too fast How do you lose yourself to someone and never lose your way how do you not run out of new things to say and if 
life we know we're always changing why should it be the same and tell me how year after year you're sure your heart will fall apart each time In your eyes I may not see forever, forever. If we can be the best of lovers, yet be the best of friends. If we can try with every day to make it better, as it grows With any luck Then I suppose The music The music The music Thank you. 